from the original sensation of the Blonde BL3 and then the CRN to the CRA and then the Moondrop Chew. Hype trains, one after another, have rocked the chi fi world and they raise the bar for bang for buck IEMs. And of course, there's always going to be brands who try to be that next big, that next big thing. Triple Win being one of them. So, let's take a look at this Triple Win Leia. With a pretty friendly $25 price tag and graphs which support the notion that it is essentially a mini Kato. This definitely had me intrigued. What I was not so infused about is that it took more than half a year for this thing to be available to me. But hey, now that it's here, no more dilly-dallying, let's get into this review of the Triple Win Leia. So the box for the Triple Win Leia is pretty basic. Uh, though it's actually not too dissimilar from the Moondrop Choose box, right? With the front here, it's covered by a cellophane and you've got some uh, specifications to the side as well as the logo again in the back. Opening up that cellophane, you will be seeing the Triple Win Leia presented in some foam inserts as well as their ear tips just right below. With these ear tips, you're getting the standard free small, medium, and large sizes, and uh, they're pretty average ear tips, just generic matte black silicone narrow bores. They fit okay, but uh, you can certainly do better. And then you have this bottom part, which is just a bit of cardboard you take out. You are presented with the cable and these ear hooks, which again are reminiscent from the ones in the Moon Jock Chew. They suck, don't use these. And yeah, that's kind of it for the accessories. You don't get a pouch, heck, not even any like instruction manuals. Now, I understand that most people just want to get the product and nothing else, and they'll throw the box out anyways, but for those who like a full unboxing experience and get the accessories like me, this is as bare bones as it gets. And remember, the Fayo Poppy that I reviewed at $10 gave you a lot more stuff and even the Chew was able to afford you a pouch even if it's a really bad pouch. So I'm pretty disappointed about this unboxing experience to be honest. And here are the housings for the Triple Win Leia. It's pretty bad from what I've seen to be honest. Like I think it's made of metal. Ooh. It's got decent heft and feels decently solid, but the black coating, as you can see, it kind of kind of looks cheap, and uh, you can see the, the like the grooves and the roughness on the contours here. It's like some sort of rough machining that hasn't finished yet. It it feels more like a prototype shell that they have shipped out as a full product. Here, look at this. Look at this scratch in the venting here. This thing was present the moment I took it out of the box. So not only is the housing a little rough, there are possibly imperfections and QC control issues too. Now another thing here that I've noticed is that on this female two pin connector, this one on the right side, it's kind of loose. I can feel it sort of moving slightly. and and. This often happens on budget chi-fi sets, so Triple Win's not the only one having this problem, but not to an amount this noticeable. Like when I when I put a cable on, this will feel really loose, and I, I have my doubts as to its durability in the future, actually. Thankfully, despite the rough shape, the uh, Leia, it actually fits into your ears quite well, being sufficiently ergonomic and comfortable. Now comes the cable, which is yet another disappointing and low quality thing. To be fair, the wires themselves, uh, they're pretty nice. It's actually quite similar to the wires on the Tangium OLED cable, aesthetically at least. But it's a little more rubbery and it's less supple. The chin slider here is solid and it holds its position quite well. 
However, uh, hopefully you can see this, but the two pin session sections here, these metal bits here, they've already exhibited signs of oxidation out of the box. Again, this already has a bit of like splotchiness because of oxidation out of the box, which is really, really representative of their quality control right now. What are they doing, Triple Win? And another thing is that the Y splitter, it's uh, it's really crude looking and unnecessarily cumbersome. And look at this headphone jack. It doesn't even have the gold coating. Granted, it isn't going to hurt the sonic performance, but still, it's another sign of Triple Win cheaping out on the components here. Overall, the build quality of the Leia has basically one of the loosest tolerances I have seen on a $25 product. And I really hope in the future, Triple Win will tighten up their quality control because this is really disappointing. The uh, Triple Win Leia, it has a pretty big profile on your ear. So when you lie to the side, you can sort of feel that it, it kind of juts into your ears a little bit. And uh, the rough shape on the housing of the Leia itself, it doesn't really help uh, and it doesn't do it any favors in terms of comfort either. Uh, the cable itself, not too microphonic, although it's a little rubbery. Uh, not the best, I'd say. Uh, overall, it's a average to below average sleeping experience with this and I wouldn't recommend using Triple Win Leia for uh, sleeping use. So for my testing, uh, I find that a warm source tends to be the better pairing with the Triple Win Leia. So I'm going to be using the DX150 as my source for testing the Leia out. Uh, it helps control some of that harsh shoutiness from the Leia. And as for ear tips, I will be using these from the uh, Panasonic RP-HJE150. Ugh, what a mouthful of a name. Uh, but yeah, I class these ear tips as a wide bore, though they'd not be as wide as the ones that you're used to. But these tips, they fit my ear with the most comfort. Uh, however, honorable mentions also go to the Moondrop Spring Tips or generic white bores. Those work well too. If you want a bit more bass presence uh, than the narrow bore ear tips in the box, they do an okay job as well. And with that all out of the way, let's get into the sound of the uh, Triple Wind Leia. So people keep saying that the uh, Leia is like a baby Moondrop Kato, but I disagree. I think it's more akin to a, a Mini Aria or a KXXS, and here's why. The base of the Triple Win Leia, it's pretty shy. You're getting a pretty low quantity of base with a semi-soft base texture and a pretty quick decay. The texture here is uh, half decent. Uh, I think it's definition though, it's only you know, alright for the price. It's pretty rudimentary. Uh, there's a minimal to non-existent level of bass bleed, and if you do want a bit more bass, fear not. Uh, as this driver, it does have a bit of headroom for a bass EQ, and it can rumble quite nicely if given the opportunity. Overall, a well-tuned representation of a somewhat conservative bass range, with room to spare for EQ. The mid-range of the Leia is relatively forward having a precise timbre with its lower mid-range given adequate space and warmth. The upper mid-range though, this is where a few problems arise. First, I'm hearing a lot of uh, shoutiness reminiscent of Moondrop's Aria and the earlier KXSS models that can just be a bit overbearing for some songs such as uh, Plastic Love by Maria Takeuchi. Uh, the second thing that I'm hearing is that there are some technical issues here, with the drivers trying, trying its best to do something but failing to separate the musical elements. It leads to this uh, compressed upper mid-range that can smear instruments together. Thankfully, the entire mid-range is free from the worst of graininess and artifacting, with a technical ability that's perhaps not groundbreaking per se, however adequate. Though the tuning deficits here make the Leia less enjoyable for me. The high range of the Triple Win Leia is just fine. 
it's typical for the price and it doesn't really bust any blocks. It's decently tuned, relatively inoffensive, and doesn't overstay its welcome. I don't hear too much of sibilance, but the definition and clarity is just alright for the price. There's a decent sense of air, and the overall base light tonality means that the layer avoids feeling like it's drowning you compared to darker sets. I'm not impressed by this treble, but it doesn't hurt the sound and it rounds out a decent sound signature, albeit with some drawbacks. The soundstage width of the triple wind layer is slightly above average, just a bit out of my head. Uh, the beginnings of soundstage height are present, but not much more. The imaging on the triple wind layer is also maybe average for the price. It's somewhat messy with some illogical placement of instrumentation, but you, you can hear that it's trying, instead of just giving up like the lesser sets do. Detail retrieval on the, on the layer is also decent, though it is definitely better at portraying macro details than it is at micro details, which can sound ever so slightly grainy at points. It doesn't help that uh, particularly in the upper mid-range, separation can be compromised by the overly shouty tuning. The technical performance on a layer won't be its main selling point, and it certainly doesn't punch too far up its price tag. But it will be sufficient and it won't make you feel like you're missing out too much from a similarly priced competitor either. Right, with how popular the Moondrop Chew is and how hyped the Leia had been, it's only fair to pit them in a comparison together. Uh, so on the build front, the win goes to the Chew, as despite its cable being really fragile feeling, it doesn't feel downright cheap as the Leia's cable does. And the Chew's housing at least doesn't have damage right out of the box like the Leia. And it's definitely a smoother finish than the Leia's rough contours. Accessories are also a win for the Chew, uh, as it has the spring tips and a pouch, even if it's a bad one, whilst matching the Leia's earhook inclusion. Now for the sound, <laughs> both the Leia and Chew are pretty bright, but different interpretations are at play here. The bass on both are similar, however the Leia has a bit more EQ headroom, and generally it rumbles a bit more to my ears. Mid-range on both veers to the bright side, with the layer being uh, slightly compressed and shouty, whereas the Chew also exhibits some piercing issues. Uh, and the male vocals on Chew can sometimes lack body, if you're into that. You, it's here where you have to say that you have to choose which trade-offs you are willing to live with. Highs on both have similar performance, uh, not much to say here. And technicalities though is where the Chew pulls some winds over the Leia. Both have similar soundstage, however the Chew can render some micro details that the Leia can struggle with. Uh, and its imaging chops, even if still basic, edges out the Leia's. So if the Chew can punch up uh, its price tag maybe one or two tiers, the Leia mostly stays in its lane with its technical ability. Now if we look at this from a purely from a tuning standpoint, I think the Leia is a nicely tuned set, and I personally prefer its tuning from the Chew, even if the upper mid range is a little hot. However, the general win still goes to the Chew. It's just got too many upsides to miss out on, with a much better build than the Leia, the spring tips continuing to be a killer inclusion, and the slightly better technicalities. I just can't recommend a Leia in this comparison unless you can stomach less accessories, a worse build, and you have listened to both and you know that you have a preference for the Leia sound. There's a lot of caveats for me to, to be able to have to pass through to recommend the Leia to you over from the Chew, see? Well, since a lot of frequency graphs and a lot of peeps said that the Leia is a baby, baby Kato, let's compare and see. Now for the build, this is no doubt a Kato win. It's just a more solidly built IEM with a vastly better feeling cable. And its accessories package is incredibly comprehensive 
with spring tips and moon drop mist tape foamies, a soft and hard pouch, and a really nice big presentation compared to the Leia's bare bones and boxing experience. To be fair though, the Kato is almost 200 bucks as opposed to Leia's more budget $25 price tag. But uh, as you've seen before, even in the budget segment, there are already many items that offer more in the box than the Leia does. Now for sound, this is where the whole Leia equals baby Kato comparison just falls apart. The bass on both are conservative, however the Kato it has more bass definition and can render its low end with more subtlety than the Leia which is comparatively one note. The mid-range of the Kato is noticeably more refined, with much more detail and no to little shoutiness, which took years for Moondrop to figure out. As opposed to the Leia where you can sort of feel that Triple Wind's kind of new to this, and they haven't figured out the, the secret sauce to get forward mids without shoutiness just yet. Hence why I say the Leia is closer to, a, to the Aria and the KX success rather than it does to the Kato. The treble is where the Kato just slaughters the Leia. It genuinely has really nice high-end detail, not just random sizzles and sibilants, and a clarity not even seen in Moondrop's higher-end models such as the S8. Now, the Leia's treble certainly isn't bad, but being average in its price as compared to the Kato, which is just excellent, means that there's really no contest here. Technical ability is a strong win for the Kato, trumping Vallea in all aspects and matching in its uh, soundstage width, with Vallea pulling a small cons uh, conciliatory win with EQ headroom in the base range. For the price, it's hard to expect the Leia to match the Kato. A more fair comparison would be that the Leia is reminiscent of Moondrop's older releases such as the Aria, the KXSS, and the Starfield. It brings the mid forward sound with some harm and conformity uh, of those IEMs down to a budget level, whereas Moondrop's own budget products they tend to go for a brighter sound or something closer to IEF tuning. Sure, it doesn't win the technicalities war with the Kato, but for what it is, I think if you're on a budget and you want to hear what the Aria can be like, buying the Leia and applying a bass boost EQ on it is decently representative of the Ari experience actually. Now, as much as I critique Vallea's tuning issues on the sole basis of sound, it's still a solid set. However, in a class where the students can score 9s or even 9.5s out of 10, the 8 out of 10 scoring student shines less brightly. And Vallea is just that type of student in this proverbial classroom of the budget chi-fi landscape. Even if I like the signature of Vallea, it's just got some really noticeable pitfalls with shoutiness and compression that I can't ignore. And worse, its build is probably one of the shoddiest I've seen in this price, with really bare bones packaging a housing that looks and feels more like a prototype than a final product, and a cable that just reeks of cost cutting. And if you compare Vallea to the Kato, well, you're not exactly wrong, but you're giving the Leia way more credit than it's worth. Saying that it is closer to a baby Aria with less bass would probably be more fair and representative. In the Leia's price tier, I still see the Chew as the more complete package with an equally if not better technical performance and a tuning that is a different taste, sure, but excellent nonetheless. As such, I see little reason for getting the Triple Win Leia at this point unless you have tried out the Chew and Leia and have a clear preference for the Leia sound. And that's a wrap on another review. Uh, as usual, I'll leave the links to the music I use in the description, as well as links to my website and my Patreon where you can support me for that I have the budget to actually bring in more products for review, of course. Shoutouts to my Tier 2 patrons, 78 Dragon. Uh, of course, Tier 2 patrons get my video scripts, 
and the lower tiers can get access to uh, behind the scenes footage, extra photography of the products if and when they are available. Uh, as always, comment in the comment section if you have any suggestions, any questions, feel free. Uh, and like the video if you like the video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this type of content as well as my gaming content. And if not, uh, oh yeah, of course, hit the bell button uh, if you subscribe so that you get the videos into your feed. And otherwise, if nothing else, then I thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. This is Romarion, signing off.